Today we are taking cues from the pros to keep plumbing pitfalls at bay this holiday. And Tom Coleman is a licensed plumber and training coordinator at TLC Plumbing and joins us today. Hi Tom. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for being here. You know, big storm today, so a lot of people want to make sure that their pipes don't freeze. And right. so tell us a little bit about what damage frozen pipes can actually cause to us. Well, you know, as water freezes, it expands. Mm -hmm and uh, it can split your water line. If this happens inside a wall or some other concealed location and the water runs for a while, uh -huh. you know, the wall becomes uh, saturated, uh, your hardwood floors become saturated, your carpet and everything gets wet. And so, uh, in addition to having the plumber come out and cut open the wall to repair the leak, uh -huh. then you got to address uh, repairing the sheetrock, uh -huh. you know, uh, replacing the carpet. What a and, and hardwood floors, you know, if it buckles up, it's got to be replaced. Uh, it can be uh, quite expensive. Oh, yes, yeah. like an, a domino effect because yes, one exactly. thing goes wrong and everything else you know, has that effect as well. So mm -hmm. what would you recommend then as the expert, what, as the single most important thing that we can do to prepare for the possibility of the frozen water pipes in our home? What would you say? You know, I think the first thing or the best thing that you could do is, uh, well, is to know where your water shutoff is in your home. Yes. Uh, typically, um, in newer homes, uh, well, in any home that's younger than, than say about 40 years old, mm -hmm. you'll have a water shut off valve, and sometimes they'll put them uh, at the water heater out in the garage, maybe okay. in the wall right behind the water heater or right beside it. Okay. Or sometimes under a lavatory, maybe in the master uh, bathroom. Mm. Uh, older homes, however, don't always have those shutoffs. So the water shut off for those homes are out in the street at the meter. Oh, wow. Now, the city doesn't really want you to go around shutting their meters on and <laughs> exactly. off. Exactly. I don't, However, I don't imagine they do. No. So I would advise that you have their number on hand. Okay. Uh, the other advice I would give you is maybe pick up a meter key and learn how to operate it mm -hmm. just in case. I'm not telling you to turn that meter on and off. <laughs> right. But in the event of an emergency, you know, whatever you can do. As a standby to have yeah. it. So then what can we do personally to protect ourselves then from the water lines freezing on a really cold night? Because right now we're getting to those really cold evenings. If uh, Mark Ronchetti sends us some really cold weather, we know <laughs> he's in control of the weather. Of course he is. <laughs> yeah. We can, um, uh, one of the best things to do is go around the house, open faucets at strategic locations. Okay. And just leave these faucets dripping at a slow drip all night long. Really? And so theoretically, you know, the water is moving through the pipes at night and uh, moving water doesn't freeze. Well, let me ask you this, because a lot of people, including myself, going on vacation for the holidays, they'll be gone for a week or so. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some very cold nights ahead. Would you say that while we're gone, we should just leave a little bit of a drip going? I would, especially you would. if you anticipate some frigid weather, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good to know. So now, what other protection would you say we need as far as long-term protection in order for those water lines uh, that are normally susceptible to freezing? Well, um, you can insulate them. Okay. Now, uh, a scenario would be like out in your garage, you might have some exposed water lines that feed your water heater, for example. Okay. You can go to the uh, home improvement stores uh -huh. and you can pick up some foam insulation like this. Typically, it comes in pieces about yay long. Okay. Four or five sticks in a package for less than five bucks. Hmm. That's and affordable. It, yeah. It comes in different sizes for different sized pipes. So, you can open this up and clamp it around your pipe and insulate them from the oh from the great cold. and any mm -hmm. and i mean even if you're not a handyman this is this is an easy thing sure. to do now what is this even i can do that <laughs> i'm sure you can do a lot more than that okay. what is this one well this is for an outside faucet this okay. is an insulated um faucet cover okay so basically you just hook this loop around the faucet handle outside and okay. then you snug this up against the wall oh. and so there your uh, your faucet is insulated Okay, uh, because we have to concern ourselves also with those outside bibs for sure. Uh, let me add that uh, in some locations, if you have, uh, like on a northern exposure, mm -hmm. um, where you have some cold weather all winter long, you have snow out there all winter, mm -hmm. you may want to replace your standard hose bib with a freeze proof. Oh. You'll call your plumber to come and do something like that. Okay, that's really good advice. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's about thinking ahead and just being prepared. So what can we do to prevent problems with the drains during the holidays when we have a house full of guests? Because you know that's going to be an issue for a lot of people be a this problem, week. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you've had issues in the past, uh -huh. it might be best to do a preemptive strike. Call okay. in your drain cleaner, have him come and run the lines. Especially if you live in an older section of town where you have, uh, you know, uh, big trees out in your yard between the house mm -hmm. and the street where you're going to get roots into the water, into the uh, uh, drain line. Good point. So you may want to come and have those um, uh, ran with a, a drain cleaner. 
Okay. Um, garbage disposal is typically a big issue oh, around yeah. the holidays. It is. Now, some people call it a, a disposal. It's not a disposal, it's a disposal. <laughs> yes, I like that. Okay, so there are certain things you, uh, you don't want to put down a disposal. For example, a chicken or a turkey skin, which is rubbery and resilient. Or, uh, uh, yeah, and people are making big turkeys this week for right. sure. So you don't want to throw that down to your disposal. That'll no clog no. it up. Okay. You don't want to throw uh, grease, oils, and especially bones, chicken Ugh. bones. You want to do that. Yes. One thing you can do is take a cup of ice. Okay. Pour this ice into the disposal and turn it on. Let it run for about 30 seconds. Okay. Serves two purposes. Um, if there's any grease buildup in the disposal, it will uh, cause it to harden and coagulate and break up into chunks and then flush it on out. The other purpose it serves is the ice, as it's being ground up, actually sharpens the blades in the disposal. Oh, wow. This yeah. is great advice, Tom. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And where can we go for more information and tips from you? Uh, online, you can go to www.tlcplumbing.com. Okay. Or you can call 505-761-9696. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here. Great advice and happy holidays to thank you. Thank you, Sandy. And you'll want to stick around for this. This is one of our favorite things. Coming up next on New Mexico Style, Village Inn is dishing up some delicious holiday pie. <laughs>